Dara from the community's team at the National Football Museum. The museum's collection is packed with the history of the game of our lives. In this video, I'll be taking you through the first 11 objects and people important to the history of the Women's World Cup. And we'll be exploring the earliest international women's games, important milestones in the competition, and of course, some of the stars of the game. Our first object is related to the Dick Kerr ladies team. Dick Kerr ladies football team were hugely popular during the First World War and their squad, which included players such as Lily Parr, were some of the very best. When the FA banned women's football in 1921, the players decided to go abroad and play football internationally. These are some of their pennants from the games, sometimes playing against other women's teams, but often playing against men's teams. During their American tour, they played against some of the top sports stars of the day, such as Peter Renzulli, who remarked, we were national champions and we had a hell of a job beating them. Though not officially part of a World Cup, these objects highlight the beginnings of organised international women's football. The first large-scale tournament was in 1971 in Mexico. This was hosted soon after the Men's World Cup in the same country. The tournament was sponsored by Martini and Rosso and featured pink uniforms for stadium staff as well as pink goalposts, though it's hard to tell from these black and white photos. The tournament's mascot was Xochitl, as can be seen on this pennant from the tournament. Xochitl means flower and the mascot is girl in a football kit. The England team that played that year was an incredibly young squad, including Leah Caleb at just 13 years old. The tournament was a big success with 110,000 people gathering in the Azteca Stadium to watch the final between Mexico and Denmark, where Denmark won 3-0. Although this first tournament was in 1971, England didn't assemble their official squad for the first time until 1972, and this marked the very beginning of the Lionesses. They had their first international match against Scotland 100 years to the month after the men's first official international game. These photos are from a shoot at Wembley Stadium, though the Lionesses would not be able to play there until 2014. Here you can see 16-year-old Jenny Allert and one of the captains, Sheila Parker, with her son. The game ended 3-2 and the squad recently reunited in 2019. It's the first time that they'd all been together since the 70s. Throughout the 1980s, there were five mini World Cups or Mundialito tournaments. The first held in Japan and the rest in Italy. England's women's team participated in four of these, finishing third in 1980 and 81 and winning these tournaments in 1985 and 87. The win in 1985 was England's first at a tournament outside of the UK. Here you can see a photo of Angela Gallimore lifting that trophy. Now we're headed to 1991, where the first official Women's World Cup was held in China. This was a landmark event as it was the first tournament organised by FIFA. Though this marked a huge step forward in the women's game, there were still marked differences between this and the men's tournament the year before. The games were only 80 minutes long and just two points were awarded for a win instead of three. Different smaller footballs were also going to be used, but this was scrapped shortly before the competition started. This ticket was for the closing ceremony of the competition, where the USA had recently triumphed over Norway to win this tournament, the first of four World Cup wins to date for the USA women's team. It wasn't until the 1995 World Cup in Sweden that England qualified for the first time. This photo shows England playing against Denmark. The player with the yellow band on her head is the multi-talented Claire Taylor. Not only did she make the England football team, but she also won a World Cup with the England women's cricket team in 1993. Whilst playing football, Taylor worked for the Royal Mail and highlighted the lack of funds for women's football, being quoted as saying, the amount of time I spent away on unpaid leave has got beyond a joke. This list from the 1990s shows the jobs that the Women's England squad had alongside their football, including animator, policewoman and driver. The 1999 Women's World Cup was remarkable for several reasons. Held in the USA, it was promoted on a scale not seen before in women's football. Originally planned to be held in the smaller stadiums across the country, after the USA won gold at the 1996 Olympics in women's football, it was decided that games would be held in the huge stadiums that had recently hosted the Men's World Cup games. 
This renewed interest in women's football was paired with a powerful ad campaign to target a wider audience, promoting products such as breakfast cereal and soccer barbie to appeal to a family audience. The result of this meant sold out stadiums and a huge buzz around this World Cup in the USA. They went on to win this World Cup with China and Brazil taking second and third places. Every World Cup needs a mascot and the Women's World Cup is no different. After the success of World Cup Willie in the men's 1966 games, mascots have proved both popular and marketable all over the world. This ticket that we saw earlier from the closing ceremony of the very first Women's World Cup shows China's World Cup mascot, Ling Ling the Bird. Although Ling Ling was the first official mascot, remember Zochil from earlier in the video? She was the mascot for that unofficial 1971 tournament in Mexico. We also in our collection have a stuffed toy of the 2019 Women's World Cup mascot, Etty. She's the daughter of Footix, the men's 1998 World Cup mascot. We couldn't talk about the Women's World Cup without mentioning some of the iconic players and managers who have been involved over the years. Hope Powell is synonymous with the England team, the Millwall and Croydon midfielder having played in the squad at the very first competition where England qualified, Sweden in 1995, and she played for the Lionesses from 1983 to 1998. From 1998, she became the manager of the England women's team and coached them for 66 games in total before leaving in 2013. She was the youngest coach of any England national team when she was appointed, as well as the first woman and the first person of colour to hold the position. In 2003, she was inducted into our National Football Museum Hall of Fame, recognising her achievements and talents. Next up, we have Marta. Marta is often regarded as the best female player of all time. She was named FIFA World Player of the Year six times, with five of those being consecutive years from 2006 to 2010, and was also the first female footballer to score at five consecutive Olympic Games. Hailing from Brazil, she's often compared to another Brazilian great, Pelé, and she has been a trailblazer in international football for over 10 years. Her shirt features in the galleries of the National Football Museum. Finally, let's look at this shirt belonging to joint top goal scorer at the 2019 World Cup, Ellen White. White made her England debut back in 2010 against Austria, scoring in the last minute to seal England's 3-0 victory. After 2011's World Cup, White was named England's International Player of the Year for the first time. She would go on to win this award two more times. A prolific goal scorer, Ellen White scored a hat-trick in the record-breaking 20-0 defeat over Latvia in 2021, overtaking Kelly Smith to become England women's all-time top scorer. This was a shirt issued for that fateful match, which is now in our collection at the National Football Museum. To see these objects and much more, head to the National Football Museum in Manchester. We look forward to welcoming you soon.